What up, homies? I don't even know if you can see me right now. I'm gonna try and load this up uh, on my own computer because I'm trying to stream right now on my phone. So I don't know how well this is gonna work, but we're going to uh, to give it a try. I'm gonna play around with these settings over the next couple of streams and see if I can't get this right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and apologize right here, right now, that I don't have my stuff together. So, um, give me one second to get this right, and I'm going to adjust this for you. I'll take my back brace off too, just because that looks funny. Sorry about that. See if you can't see me a little bit better when I take my hat off. Ron Holly in the building. What's up, dude? Tell me how the volume is. Tell me how you can hear me and uh, how things look in tonight's stream. I know it is a little bit different. I've got um, a different setup. I can't even see very well, but... Um, we're trying it out on my phone, see if the quality might be a little bit better. Hopefully we're not gonna be lagging quite as bad as we have been in past weeks. Um, I can already tell what I've got my phone mounted on is a little bit unstable, so hopefully we don't have too much of an issue with that. But good to see you in here, Ron. Uh, the other couple people who are in here so far, hope you're having a great Saturday night. What have you guys been up to? Cheers. I've got a uh, Breckenridge Brewery, Broncos Country, Hoppy Pale Ale. Go Broncos. They don't play till Monday night. But very exciting that we are in week one of the NFL. I have been waiting and uh, am super pumped about it. So hope you all are well. We are going to just chat a little bit about Kytec Soft Classics, given that Riley recommended the topic um, last week. And so I'm just going to run through some of my favorite Kytec Soft Plastic Ron says visual is great volume is low let's see if we can crank that up Lance Stevens what up bro hope you're doing well so I can't you guys need to let me know if this starts lagging like it has been in weeks past just because I do want to try and uh, focus on that and see if I can get quality up a little bit. And um, yeah, I, first of all, I'm streaming on my phone. This time I am going to try on my GoPro here uh, in the next couple of days, see if that doesn't make a little bit of a difference. But I have a feeling that internet connection might be a big piece of it. So we'll see how this goes. Ryan, what up, man? Feeling uh, pretty well. Just took my back brace off. I am doing a little bit more um, physical exercise as of late. So hopefully I will continue to, to feel better and better. So thank you for asking, man. How have you been? Lance says, might be doing one uh, martyr fishing day. I'm not sure what that means with a few friends before it gets too cold between open and ice fishing. Yeah, um, we are like quickly getting into fall fishing here in Colorado we had our first snow of the year this this past week and um, yeah kind of a, a weird deal luckily here in Colorado we have kind of on and off sort of weather so while it was freezing cold um, on Tuesday and Wednesday and we did get about four inches of snow that melted off pretty quickly on Wednesday and then uh, and warmed up you know really by yesterday and today so we'll have steady 80 degree uh, highs during the day and lows like in the 50s uh, this this next week, but it should be all sunny, not really gonna get many storms, but we needed the moisture quite frankly. Here in Colorado, we've had some pretty bad fires just like uh, everywhere west of us, you know, especially Oregon and California. So feeling bad for uh, 
those folks, especially Ron Holly in the building, who I know has been dealing with um, not just the fires, but the lockdowns uh, in California as well. So, Pete, what's up, dude? Uh, water temps, good question. I could not quite tell you. Um, I haven't had a chance to get out and do a lot of fishing, especially here in the Denver metro area uh, around where I live, just because um, having had a seizure a month ago, I can't drive for the next couple of months. So, uh, water temps are starting to fall. If I had to guess, probably, uh, you know, mid seventies, maybe low seventies. Um, uh, it is still relatively warm, but I'm sure that the temps dropped quite a bit, uh, this past week. So sorry, man. can't tell you. Ryan says I'm good. Just, uh, in the combine harvesting canola. Dang, dude, you are just working and it's late, man. My buddy and I got a boat, 2020 Tracker, WT19, Tourney Edition, fishing a bass tourney at the only bass lake in Saskatchewan next weekend. Hey, cheers, Ryan. Uh, congrats on the purchase. Good luck to you and your buddy. That is super exciting news. I am jealous, to say the least. Uh, Blake, yes, I do like bass fishing quite a bit, man. Um, it is kind of my addiction. Uh, over the past couple of years. I grew up trout fishing here in Colorado uh, as a fly fisherman and then moved away for college and then for a period of about 10 years and moved back home once my oldest daughter turned one. So just four years ago and uh, stumbled into bass fishing and have fallen in love. So bass fishing has really been my passion for the last handful of years. And, um, yeah, I mostly do it from the bank and in local reservoirs, lakes, and ponds here close to home. Uh, we don't have a lot of big bodies of water around where I live. So, uh, still in the learning process, still, uh, I'm really obsessed with tackle, as you can tell. We're going to talk about some baits tonight, soft plastics in particular. Love to answer any and all questions that you've got, but like I just said and will admit I am still learning and uh, and will probably always be learning. Um, I, I prefer to have that mindset and mentality uh, and not pretend like I know everything. Uh, so anyway, welcome to the channel. Thanks for uh, for being here. If you guys aren't already subscribed, please do me that favor. You know, we, we're only at like, you know, 2100 subscribers right now. And uh, I know I need to, to start pumping out more and more content, especially the kind of content that, that you guys are looking for. So if you have any video suggestions, things that you want um, to see, please let me know. Um, this, at least for the next year or two, uh, while I don't have a boat or kayak um, or canoe or any way of actually getting on the water, will be some fishing videos, but will be a lot of uh, you know, informational teaching style videos on knots and best baits for different times of the year in different conditions and lure reviews and things like that. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get into it. I don't see Riley in here, which is unfortunate because I do want to talk about some Kitech baits and that was her suggestion. Um, Ron says, air quality is very poor. Looks like LA on a smoggy day. Yeah, man, I've seen that. I've got a handful of friends that live in California and that were traveling in Oregon last weekend. So I know it's horrible right now and I am sorry about it, man. No, David, it's, it's not uh, the quality of his uh, video, but rather just the fact that he lives in California and uh, it is red outside. Do the fires. <laughs> hey, appreciate it, Ryan. Um, and yeah, guys, hit that like button. There's seven people in here, five thumbs up already. So really appreciate you. We are going to dive into some Kitech soft plastics. And let's go ahead and start out with the most obvious and most well-known. I guess we could go big first. First is the Swing Impact Fat. I've got one rigged up here. I'm 
This is the second largest size that they make, the 6.8 inch. And uh, this is an awesome bait for creeping early in the year, uh, especially in the springtime when bass are feeding up on large gizzard shad and other things like that. But of course, this is a year round bait that will work um, when the water is warm. You can drag this on bottom super slow. Cool thing about a Kytec soft plastic swim bait is just how much that tail bends over, just how soft the soft plastic is. So that is the good and bad thing about these baits, right? Uh, the good thing is it has superior action, you know, better than pretty much anything else on the market. And it sets the standard. It is the reason that, you know, Rage Tail makes the Rage Swimmer. That is an exact copy. And there are probably a half a dozen or 10 other exact copies on the market. But this 6.8 inch uh, is a large Bait. I've got this rigged on an 8 aught owner beast hook. I think this is a, a, a 3 8 ounce uh, weighted hook. So weedless, you can drag this through or around any type of cover and, uh, and it will come through. So one of my favorite big soft plastic swim baits, along with a lot of these others that I've got sitting right here. But honestly, I've got this bait in... The 5.8 inch, which is just a little bit more versatile and one that I throw a little bit more frequently. Uh, it's the same size as this one, the, the Rage Swimmer that I just showed you. And this is an awesome rigging. This is the um, Six Sense Divine swim bait head, which I love because it's got a screw lock keeper. It's got a five or maybe six aught hook on there that's Beefy, but not too heavy of a wire. And um, just great details. The line tie is, is right. And um, and I like it. The paint does chip off these heads pretty quickly. But really good bait. Four to a pack. And uh, I want to say these are just a little bit cheaper than the 6.8 inch. So uh, 5.8 is one of my favorite. But, of course, the 4.8 is probably the most well-known, the most uh, famous, and the most commonly thrown size. This is not too big for anybody to throw. And, um, you know, fish of all sizes will eat this thing. So I would throw the 4.8 inch on like a, uh, a four-aught beast hook or like a, a, a four aught, you could even throw it on a five aught exposed hook jig head. But um, anyway, the Swing Impact Fat series of swim baits is what sets the standard in the market, quite frankly. Two others that I want to talk about. Um, the of course I've got the 3.8 inch and the 3.3 inch. I probably throw the 3.3 three, um, more than anything on a finesse setup. So I will throw that on either a boxer head jig um, exposed hook from VMC or on, what's the other that I use quite a lot? Just an owner ball head jig. Talked about this a lot before. This is like the three aught size. You get a little bit more hook gap on the same three aught size with the VMC than you do with the owner. But of course, owner hooks are going to be just a little bit higher quality. Um, you know, their their needle point. Hooks are just more reliable. I find that I get better penetration and don't break as many hooks. So I like that exposed hook on a finesse swim bait like the 3.3 inch. The 3.8 is a size that I, I really like to use as a swim jig trailer. It's probably my top swim jig trailer to be quite honest with you guys. 
Juan M says rainbow trout color. Yeah, that 6.8 inch is in the rainbow trout. I think it's called ghost rainbow trout. Yeah, ghost rainbow. So here's one that I want to talk about. And this is a newer bait to the market. No, Blake, I have not used a head banger. You're talking about a paddle tail swim bait? Or are you talking about one of their other baits? Or is the head banger that uh, chattering style bait? So either way, I don't know if you noticed that, but this right here is the Saltwater Swing Impact Fat Series. And um, check this out. Here I've got it rigged on a swim jig. This is just a very basic setup I've got. This is a Strike King Tour Grade swim jig. This is a light wire hook in a light-ish swim jig, a quarter ounce. And, uh, and I throw this up in the shallows. So cool thing about this Saltwater Series Swing Impact Fat, they only make it in one size right now and they make it in some saltwater colors. So um, you don't get the, the subtle and more common and popular bass fishing colors, but they do make, you know, this chartreuse, what do they call it? Chartreuse back pearl. And um, it is significantly more durable than the standard swing impact, um, or swing impact fat, I should say, because they do make it in the swing impact. And I've got a pack of those as well, if I might be able to find them. Yeah, I've got them here, and I'm gonna show them to you. But um, I do recommend if you're gonna throw white or chartreuse in white, that you check out the saltwater series of their paddle tail swim baits from Kai Tech because they will last you probably twice as long, if not longer. Um, I have not taken this swim bait off. Now it has torn up quite a bit, but it's got this cool keeper on the bottom, the Strike King swim jig does. And, um, and I probably caught, you know, 10 or 12 fish on this bait. Now, of course, the fish could rip off the tail, but in general, this soft plastic is quite a bit more durable than you're gonna get out of a standard Kytec. So keep that in mind. While we're at it, let's just transition right over to talking about the swing impact, not the fat, but the standard swing impact. I swear I've got a, a designated box of them. Maybe it's this one right here. So I kind of hate to admit, but this is this is something cool to no, and I did make a video on this a long time ago, but here is one cool way to store your Kytec or Rage Swimmers or other paddle tail swim baits that come in clamshell packages. These are all Kytecs, for example. And, um, and here I've got some 5 eighths, 5 eighths, 4 eighths, 4 eighths, 3 eighths, 3 eighths, uh, three eights and three threes all in one box. This is a standard 3700 size box from Flambeau and um, in this I'm able to keep what is probably a half a dozen packs of paddle tail swim baits in this one box. It takes up less room in my tackle bag and wood in your boat as well but what I've done, is, as you can see, is just literally cut up the clamshells so that the tails aren't getting bent the way that they would if you just put them in loose. So while we're at it and talking about that, take a look at this box. This is a 3600 size, smaller box. No way, Ryan, my man. You did make it. I was giving you a hard time over on Instagram this past week, and I am happy to see it in here. And Riley hopped in. We are going with your suggestion, talking about Kytec 
soft plastic baits this evening. You just missed talking about the swing impact fat and the swing impact fat in the saltwater series, okay? So this is a little bit more durable than the standard swing impact fat, but it's made for salt water and only comes in salt water colors. So the white and chartreuse and white are really the only ones that I throw or would throw myself at the moment. But let's talk about the next bait in the lineup and that is the swing impact, not the swing impact fat, but the swing impact. Um, I throw this in really two sizes, though they make it in like five, all the way from, I want to say, two inches up to uh, four and a half inches. So four inch is my most commonly used size. I've got it in, you know, a handful of different colors. Here are, you know, three of my, my favorites, I should say. This is the bluegill. This is the electric shad. This is the sexy shad. I also throw it in white and black and blue. But um, as you can tell, this bait right here has a lot more action than the swing impact fat. Um, this thing just bends all the way over. It's an awesome drop shot bait if you're going to swim a drop shot. Great on an exposed jig head or on a weedless um, hook if you're going to swim it during the summertime. This is really a warm water, aggressive action type of bait. And um, it's a good one, just like all Kitex are. But um, like I said, they make it in a wide variety of sizes. But the sleeper, in my opinion, that most people would not throw... Um, and you might not see them readily available everywhere, is the largest size that they make. This is a four and a half inch. Um, so like here, I've got one rigged. Weedless, this is an owner twist lock. And I want to say this is a four aught, one eighth ounce size. So absolutely love this. And um, what's cool about this bait, just like the Swing Impact Fat, is that it's got a channel. Um, it's got really thick ribs around the relatively narrow body of the swim bait. And then it's designed with a ton of attention to detail. So along the back of the bait, um, there is a, a hook slot for you to rest your hook in there without actually having to tuck it into the bait, which is going to bend it and in my opinion, mess with the action a little bit. So this will allow the hook to kind of sit on top of the bait and remain relatively weedless. And um, really cool deal. I like using a twist lock keeper uh, just because it's not going to pull off nearly as easily as if you were using a standard EWG style hook um, or a lot of other weedless style hooks. So um, the four and a half inch is awesome as a standalone swim bait, as a uh, swim jig trailer, and also a good chatterbait trailer. I do not think the standard swing impact fat is a good chatterbait trailer, nor do I think average paddle tail swim baits make good chatterbait trailers. You've probably heard it before, but it messes with the action. Um, the blade is disturbing the water in front of the bait and pushing water back. And so what happens to that paddle tail, which ordinarily would wanna swim back and forth, is it just rises up and kinda of lazily wags back and forth. So if you're going to throw a paddle tail swim bait as a chatterbait trailer, what you need to do is actually rig it upside down in order to get more of a standard um, kick to it without it wanting to uh, to rise up so hopefully that makes sense but in my opinion there are much better trailers to use on the back of a chatterbait uh, than a, a standard paddle tail swim bait so if you're curious about that i've made um, a video in the past 
you know, top 10 Chatterbait trailers. And, uh, and I'd recommend that you check that out. Ron says, I'm trading all of my lures for marshmallows. That is hilarious. My face is now healed from that marshmallow that burned me when I was up in the mountains, um, or I should say down in Colorado Springs, but deep in the wilderness uh, last week doing some trout fishing and uh, roasting some s'mores on a nightly basis. So pretty funny that you say that. All right, so let's move on. There's one last swim bait from Kai Tech that I want to talk about, and that is the Easy Shiner, okay? Same deal as the Swing Impact. They make it in a wide variety of sizes. They make it all the way down to like a two inch and all the way up to, I want to say like an eight inch, which is absolutely crazy. But in my opinion, the best sizes are like the four inch, maybe down to the three inch and up to the five, but the four inch is super versatile. So I throw it on that same exposed hook jig that I mentioned already. This is the VMC boxer jig head, like a one eighth ounce, three aught size. Uh, wanna see if I've got one rigged on the owner and I don't, but I could rig it up for you if you wanna see, but it's going to look pretty similar to this. This is super versatile swim bait, but with a much more subtle action than that swing impact. So I like this also on a chatterbait trailer, but especially as just a standalone subtle swim bait year round. This is a sleeper of a bait. It's got a little bit more um, dense of a material. Uh, it feels like it's, how do I put this? It feels a little bit more durable than the Swing Impact or the Swing Impact Fat, though it's not. Um, and don't quote me on this, but I want to say that this has the dual density soft plastic that a lot of these other baits have that I'm going to show you here as we get into this. So um, as you can see, I've got a box dedicated to the Easy Shiner all in the four inch size. So obviously I've got a couple of these that are dedicated more for swim jig and chatterbait trailers, but then I've got these really bait fishy colors that I really prefer to throw as standalone swim baits. So feel free to ask any questions on any of those Kitech swim baits, but we're gonna move on from swim baits, except I wanted to show you the one that uh, I already skipped over, I already dropped somehow. Um, where'd it go? No, Riley, I got distracted when you hopped in here. 407, you're using the two inch, man. Dang, son, that is, that is tiny. Um, I really don't throw uh, paddle tail swim bait smaller than like the 3.3 inch size. Um, I used to throw the 2.8 inch sometimes, but um, once they made the 3.3, once I really got turned on to the 3.3, um, that's really all that I throw and stopped throwing the 2.8. And, um, you know, I, I switched over and I do throw, say, the, the Spark Shad from Mega Bass in the 3 inch size. But when it comes to Kitech, 3.3 is like the smallest that I use. So anyway, here is the other saltwater swim bait that Kitech makes. And this is the Swing Impact in the saltwater series. Again, they only make it in one size. So in the Swing Impact Fat, they make it in the 3.8. In the Swing Impact, they make it in the four inch. So same deal as what I already told you. This is going to make an awesome standalone swim bait, but also a great swim jig trailer, chatterbait trailer, kind of anything that you want to do with this thing would work great on a, on a drop shot as well. But cool thing about it is it's just a bit stiffer and more durable. So um, I would use this more year round than the standard swing impact just because the action of the tail um, is 
just a little bit less aggressive. So anyway, thought you guys should know about those Saltwater Series Kitek swim baits because they are relatively new to the market. I want to say they only put them out like a year ago and, um, and I like them. Um, no, they don't, Ryan. So I have had these Kitek uh, swing impact swim baits in here for a year or so. And as you can see, this thing closes just perfectly. Does not, you know, it's not worked. So something that you should know. Whereas I've told you before and will tell you again that Zoom soft plastics definitely do warp your boxes just like Z-Man soft plastics will as well. But most people don't know that, that Zoom soft plastics warp your, your boxes. So <laughs> 407, that's pretty funny, man. Um, I agree. They are cute and are good, you know, tiny little swim baits are good for uh, pan fishing and for trout as well. So uh, not a bad idea. These days, I'm just, I'm throwing a wider variety of soft plastics. And especially if I'm going for uh, multi-species fishing or for trout, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna throw either a drop shot bait or a variation of a Ned Rig bait that swims. So anyway, Riley says, do you have a plan on what you want to do for this giveaway? Um, not exactly, because uh, the giveaway that we're going to do is going to be different than the giveaway that I do this upcoming month. I'm pretty sure that this next giveaway that I do for the month of September is going to be centered around um, soft plastics and newer soft plastics to the market. But sorry, Riley, I, I still don't know yet. So I wish I could tell you but I don't. Okay, moving right along to another Kitek bait. Told you guys about this one before. This right here is the Kitek Crazy Flapper, okay? Awesome craw slash beaver style bait. They make it in three sizes and I've got them all here to show you. So while I'm at it, I'm just gonna whip them out. And I do have them in a wide variety of colors, but these are just the, the first three that were sitting up front. So uh, don't overthink the colors at the moment. I love that these come in clamshell packaging. So the largest is a 4.4 inch, at least I'm pretty sure, and it's giant. Um, this I'm gonna throw almost exclusively on um, a swing head or on a Texas rig, um, maybe as a punch bait maybe even on the back of a buzz bait. But a couple cool things about the Crazy Flapper in all sizes is that you can really customize the action by fiddling with the appendages, okay? So you can detach these appendages or leave them um, together and that will affect the action. So when you separate all these, it gives you a super wild, very aggressive kicking action. Now, just like with, um, let's say, the Pit Boss uh, is a good example, you can remove the inside appendages and just get more of a standard like Rage Craw style kicking action. Or you can remove the outsides and you get a very you know, squid-like, subtle action and um, just a really cool bait they make it in um, 
some remarkably sophisticated colors. Like this one's just, um, they call it Saturday Night Special, and it is black on top and blue on bottom. Really love that color. I've given away this bait in a couple different sizes um, in the past. This is the 3.6 inch size, which in my opinion is the most versatile. This is like their fire craw, what do they call it? Uh, Delta craw. And so in my opinion, it makes a perfect chatterbait trailer on the fire craw jackhammer. So this pairing right here is wicked, but I would also throw the 3.6 inch on a Texas rig and uh, you know, the sky is the limit. You can throw this on a jig trailer of kind of any kind. But 3.6 um, is just a, a great all-around size, okay? Hey, Justin, what's up, man? Don't worry about being late. Not a big deal whatsoever. Hope you're having a good night tonight. Uh, have not seen the other Justin show up in here. Uh, Ray is not in here, no. Ron is in here. Ryan was in here. Last size of the Kitek Crazy Flapper is the, the 2.8 inch. And isn't this thing adorable? You could throw this on a baby Texas rig, but really, this is just for downsizing. Finesse presentations. Um, I would throw this on a drop shot. I would throw this on a Ned rig. Um, I would throw this on a finesse jig like the Strike King Bitsy Bug um, or something of the sort. I, I throw a few other finesse jigs like that. I'll, I throw the Z-Man micro jig. I throw the uh, Booyah Baby Boo jig and, um, and a couple others. But finesse jig trailer for the 2.8 inch crazy flapper okay the the crazy flapper is super crazy it has a tremendous amount of action and is an underrated bait and as is the case with all of these kitek baits you get that squid scent that is just gnarly um very very strong scent but the fish dig it and um uh, I have nothing against it, so. Hey, speak of the devil, I was just talking about you, Justin. Welcome to the stream. Uh, good to see you in here, ma'am, and congrats again on winning the giveaway. Justin emailed me today letting me know he did get his package, and, uh, and I'm happy for you, man, so. Let's move on. All right, there are like four-ish other baits that we're going to talk about um, from Kitek while we're still on this topic. And now Kitek makes a bunch of other baits as well um, that I don't have in my arsenal or here with me right now. Uh, there could be a couple that I am not thinking of at the moment just because I didn't fully plan out this stream. But uh, what I want to talk to you about next is the Shad Impact. Okay, this bait right here has the body of the Easy Shiner, but without the paddle tail. So this bait is a drop shot bait, which I had the thought to throw it as a chatterbait trailer. I had the thought to throw it on a drop shot, um, though this is the five inch, which is their larger size. So uh, unfortunately, it's just a little bit funky on both of those. And when you rig it like a fluke, this thing has a, a weird and strange erratic action to it. So I haven't quite figured this bait out yet, to be quite honest with you, but 
It's a beautiful looking bait. This is the bluegill flash color again, which I really liked in all of Kytex baits. But the Shad Impact, I think in a smaller size would be a wicked bait fish presentation, a bait fish profile on a drop shot presentation. Okay. Actually, while we're at it, I do. There's one that I, I don't want to forget. And Justin did just get it in his package. And I've talked about this bait a number of times before. And if you don't have it in your arsenal, you need to get it. Okay. And that is the easy shaker. Justin says, just caught some good rainbows on a three inch easy shiner on a 1 16th spin head. Right on. That is a, a good combo right there, dude. Okashira screw head. Same type of presentation. So this right here is the easy shaker. This is a drop shot bait. Um, just like some of the others that I've showed you already, this is a dual density soft plastic, meaning it is uh, heavier on bottom than it is on top. So it is always going to stay horizontal in the water column. So even on a shaky head, this thing's going to sit at like a 45. This is, it is not a truly buoyant bait. It is wanting to stay horizontal. It's a perfect drop shot bait, but it also makes a great swim jig or chatter bait trailer as well, though it's very skinny. So um, in my opinion, it's just a killer drop shot bait and, um, and one of my absolute favorites. So I have it in this go-to drop shot box of mine that I throw alongside. A few others that I'll mention are the Zoom Swamp Crawler and the Robo Worm 4.5 inch Fat Worm. Okay, Those are probably right up there with um, some of my favorites that I keep in a box and not necessarily in this big container of drop shot worms. But we'll talk about drop shot baits on another stream. Um, no diggity, Justin, I do not fish for lake trout just yet. That is something that I'm going to get into more, um, in the future. But when I make it up toward the lakes, um, here in Colorado, in the mountains that have really big size lake trout, I usually find myself fly fishing in the river, um, as opposed to out on the lake. And I'm not an ice fisherman to date. So no, I don't troll uh, for lake trout, but I can see it in my future for sure. Okay, um, next series of baits is the uh, the Mad Wag. This is a curl tail worm, and, uh, and they make it in a number of sizes and styles now. This is the original Mad Wag 7-inch, okay? Um, and this is designed... As you can see, like with all their baits, a ton of attention to detail in terms of how you're supposed to rig it. You know, they, they make it so that you can fit a weedless hook and just sit right there without having to expose it. Um, and it has got a thicker section on the tail and a really thin tip of the tail. So um, really unique action on this worm super aggressive but um really good curl tail worm i don't throw ribbon tails a lot and as you guys know i throw the power bait um the power worm in the seven and the ten inch quite a lot i also throw the zoom old monster and um the zoom u tail and a couple of others so um, I don't have a lot of these mad wags, but definitely a good bait and uh, and worth taking a peek at. A lot of these baits I picked up originally because they were on sale. If you keep your eyes out, specifically on Kytex website, you can find some of these baits um, on clearance from time to time. So, you know, I, I bought an entire order of the Crazy Flappers one time and... Um, you know, it couldn't help but buy like 10 or 12 packs all at once because they were like three bucks a pack. So, um, 
Okay, I've got one other bait that I wanna show you before get into a, a, a different style um, and the last two baits. So Justin says, love Kytec Plastics and that scent is wicked. Lucky to get two or three out of, two to three fish out of them though. And that is a fact. That's why I recommended the Saltwater Series swim baits. Again, they only make them in one size for each swim bait, but you know, that's kind of what you get with soft plastics and the higher quality ones out there. They're gonna be softer, they're gonna be less durable, but you're gonna get better action out of them. And arguably catch more fish. Uh, you're gonna get more bites. Not gonna catch more fish per soft plastic. You're gonna go through more baits and therefore spend a little bit more money, but such is life. Um, no diggity says, I've got some hand lures that'll help you catch lake trout if you're interested. Um, I might be, dude. Hit me up offline and let's talk about that. You say you got some handy lures for lake trout. Um, yeah, let's talk about it, dude. 407 says, I had no idea Kytec made those worms or the flappers. This is kind of why we're talking about this right now is because Kytec uh, makes some brilliant baits but they fly under the radar for whatever reason because people really only talk about their swim baits and know that they are super high quality but don't really go out of their way to talk about some of the other baits. So here is the Kytec Noisy Flapper. I've talked about this one before. This is their soft plastic toad style bait. So soft plastic, solid body frog. Okay, this has really aggressive kickers, just like the Rage Toad. It's got flanges on it. Um, and it's got this really thick nose um, that actually makes it look and act like a crawfish if you rig it in reverse. So think about it this way. You could thread this thing onto a jig and it's going to work just like a craw, like a rage craw, uh, a rage bug, somewhere right in between those two. It's just going to be a really thick body. Uh, so it's going to fill out the skirt of your jig. But really what this bait was designed for was to be fished on the surface like a buzz toad, okay? So um, the cool thing about this guy is it's got a thick nose and a unique shaped belly to plane and, and swim quite well on the surface. Again, this is a dual density soft plastic, so it's gonna wanna stay horizontal, and uh, it doesn't float, it's not buoyant, but it stays up quite well. You can fish this thing slower than a lot of other toad style baits on the market. And again, that's a totally different rabbit hole that we could go down. I've got a dedicated box to soft plastic toads, but this is an awesome bait. Obviously, this is gonna be more for clear water. This is gonna be for dirty water, but um, what I wanna show you up close is the, the two ways that this thing can and should be rigged as a frog. Right down the middle, this is where you would throw a, a standard EWG style twist lock hook. So you're gonna screw into the nose and you're going to bring the hook right out the center of the bait. And it's got this line so that one, you can make sure that you're rigging it straight and two, you can lay the hook right in that slot, okay? Again, so you don't have to expose it, it will sit in this slot. Okay, secondly, the other way to rig this thing is just like you would a frog with a double hook. So. I'll go ahead and show you right now. I'm gonna take this hook out, um, or off rather, of this Stanley uh, Poppin' Toad. And I'm not sure if this is the exact right size. They do make uh, these hooks in a few different sizes, but what we're, gonna do, what we're gonna do is just screw this straight into the nose of the bait. all the way until that line tie gets up 
to the front. Then we're gonna bend it, bring this double hook right over. And what's awesome about this is it's got these ridges so that what you can do is tuck the, the hook points right in okay now i bent this hook to fit the top toad better than uh it fits on this uh noisy flapper so uh, i would probably bend this hook out if i was going to fish this double hook on this bait but i want to show you how the points stick right into these two slots that they make. So uh, these ridges that sit up on top of the bait. So uh, the hooks will actually tuck in there quite well. And then when you get a bite, watch what happens, very easily will pop out, okay? Uh, so if you're, if you're fishing in thicker cover um, and you have a double hook, like this, I would recommend rigging it like so, as opposed to just on a standard, you know, beast hook. But this bait is perfect size to throw on like a four rod beast hook. And um, either way would work quite well. So the Kitek Noisy Flapper. It's not the noisiest, but it is a very, very good one, okay? So, Keep that in mind, consider adding it to your arsenal, but I would highly recommend using a twist lock style hook and not just a standard EWG uh, because it will tear up just like all Kitek baits. Noah says, this guy has been, has only been into bass fishing a handful of years and already knows more than me, who's been fishing all my life. Well, Noah, it's about studying. Um, like I said, this is my passion. <laughs> I am addicted to tackle. So, um, uh, yeah, man, don't worry about it. <laughs> and I don't, again, I don't claim to know more than anybody really. So, uh, you said it, not me. Okay. Um, next, what I want to talk to you about is the salty core tubes. These baits also fly under the radar, but they are really expensive these are a specialty tube um, i don't always recommend them first there are other tubes on the market that i like more um, for certain reasons you know the the strike king coffee tubes for example i really really like for fishing like a traditional tube uh, but this is not a traditional tube the salty core tube comes in two different sizes, and I've got it in both here. Uh, this is the larger 4.25, which is a big ass tube, okay? Uh, they do make it in a smaller 3.5 inch size, which I prefer and throw more frequently, just because I think it's a little bit more versatile. But here's what makes this bait awesome, okay? And I'm just going to show you this smaller size because I've got one rigged up. And um, and this is what will show you why it's so great. The butt of the tube is sealed. The innards are solid. This is a salty core tube. The tube by itself weighs like a half ounce. So you do not need to put a weight on this. Where most people would Texas rig a tube and throw a bullet weight on the front, what you can do with this thing is rig it um, either way. And so, you know, if you've ever heard of, say, a stupid tube, check this out. Again, I recommend using a twist lock style hook to make this last as long as possible. But what's super cool is you can rig it backwards and put the nose of the hook straight in the butt of the tube, and then bring the tip of the point through the head of the tube. And just like some of these other baits that I just showed you, 
This bait is brilliantly designed, not just with the fact that it's salty core and super salty on the outside, has a really thin skirt material, but, but if you can see, there is a hook slot, okay? So again, I do not need to expose this bait. The hook just sits right on there, in there, without me tucking it in and it stays weedless. So it allows you to rig it straight and keep it weedless without having to tuck it in. Your hookup ratio is going to be better. Um, now, again, just like with all these baits, the durability is not tremendous. So you're only going to get a couple of fish per bait, but what you are going to get is more bites. Um, when you rig this thing backwards, like I just showed you, you pitch this in and it will literally glide backwards. Um, so you pull it and then this thing um, will glide in the opposite direction. And um, the action that you get out of it is just different than a standard tube. You're not going to get that spiraling um, action that you would out of a hollow body tube. So if you're looking for a bait with just different action, consider the salty core tube. Now you do pay like a dollar per bait. So they're not cheap. Okay. Keep that in mind. Uh, I think there's one more, but these are discontinued now. You're not going to find them anywhere. Unless you go on Kitex website right now, they probably have this in one color and it is the white, you know, sight flash color. This right here is their red crawdad. I forget what they call it. Yeah. Red crawdad. And this is the five and a half inch, but this is the salty core stick. And, um, and I'm almost scared to throw it because it's so unique and I don't want to run through them and I haven't found the uh, the perfect time to throw it, especially this red colored um, stick bait. But as you can see, it's got a tremendous action on it and it's a really unique bait. So I don't know why they discontinued it, maybe just because it didn't sell well. But again, this has a salty core. So you can throw this on a weightless Texas rig or on a wacky rig and it is going to have a very fast fall rate compared to other stick baits on the market. So the only other bait that I know that is this dense um, or falls that fast is the Berkeley General. Um, and I think this might still weigh more, but it's just going to have a different action to it. So yeah, definitely interesting tube. Definitely would throw that, says Justin. Yeah, man. Um, that's going to do it for all of the Kitech baits, uh, soft plastics that I have and wanted to show you this evening. There might be one or two others that are just uh, escaping me at the moment. But um, if I can think of them at another time or I find them, I will show you on, say, one of the next streams. But for now, I'm going to open this up to questions that you guys might have uh, since we have been on here for about an hour at this point. And, uh, and I don't want to stay on here for too long this evening, but I do enjoy hanging out with you guys and, uh, and talking baits, talking fishing. So um, if you've got questions, please throw them at me. Um, I might show you guys a couple of trout fishing lures, not flies, uh, but lures that I use occasionally when I do um, fish with a spinning rod for trout. Uh, I actually did catch the majority of my fish last week while up or down uh, near Colorado Springs on lures because it was in still water um, in a, a pond and a lake. You know, there was, it was creek fed, but it was really still water. There was no current. And uh, so the fish were very easy to see and they could see me 
and uh, they were pretty well educated. So they were not hitting dry flies, they were not hitting streamers, they were not hitting traditional setups that I would throw um, on my fly rod, which I did bring and give a whirl, but I only hooked up with one fish on my fly rod in a few hours of fishing. So I pretty quickly switched over to lures and started slaying them and, uh, and wanted to show you guys that. So got a question here from Justin in Wyoming saying, Tyler, if you burn that noisy flapper on the surface, does it make noise? Yes, it does. Um, so like I said, it is not quite as loud as say a rage toad, but um, it is louder than like the horny toad. Okay, if that makes sense. Um, there's a, a middle ground there. And as I showed you, this, this bait does have the flanges similar to a rage toad. Uh, whereas like the horny toad really just has the ultra vibe speed worm legs on it. And um, so it is going to leave more of a bubble trail than make noise. So again, we will talk about toads another time. Uh, the Stanley Ribbit probably makes um, about the same amount of disturbance as the Kitek crazy flapper or noisy flapper, I should say. No diggity says spinners. Um, yeah, inline spinners are a good way to catch trout for sure. Probably the most common, most famous, um, though not my go-to necessarily. I do have a lot of them. Uh, and some of the ones that I throw most frequently are, say, the blue fox. And the MEPS. I really like this pink and silver blue fox. Uh, but, you know, and you can throw cast masters and smaller spoons. There are a, a wide variety of spinner style lures that work well for trout. But for me, I like to throw small jerk baits and crankbaits and topwaters. So um, I will show you the bait that I caught the majority of my fish on was this guy right here, the Rebel Cricket Hopper and in a couple different colors. At first I was throwing this single hook barbless version, but as you can see, this is a rather large hook. And um, I was getting a lot of hits, but not a lot of hookups. So in pretty quick order, what I did was switch to the treble hook version and pinch down all of the barbs. And, um, and I very quickly started hooking up. Um, I used a different color than this. This is the fire tiger color, I believe. And as you can see, I've, I've got one of these trebles is, is totally destroyed, bent in. But uh, I was using a gold color uh day two of our three-day trip and i caught like a few dozen fish on it that one day uh was absolutely slaying them and um then i i started moving up the creek i didn't have my fly rod on me at that time i started exploring further up into really skinny water uh where there's really only small skittish wild trout and um I got hung up and could not find the bait. When I broke it off, it fell in between some rocks uh, along the bank and I couldn't find it. So unfortunately, that bait that caught so many fish uh, was lost. So I switched over to this fire tiger color and did pretty well on it the next day as well. So um, what's cool about this bait is the lip. Um, this is a waking crankbait. So it is a floater and will stay on the surface if you don't move it. You can reel it super slow and it will act like a wake bait uh, and leave a very obvious trail and will attract a lot of fish. But 
you can crank it down to say 12 or 18 inches deep if you start reeling it faster. Now it will blow out if you reel it too fast, but that bait was killing it for me, okay? Uh, another bait that did pretty well for me and is my number one trout fishing lure. Some of you guys might know about it, but a lot of you probably don't because this company is local here to Colorado, but is sold at Bass Pro and Cabela's. This is the Dynamic Lures HD Trout. Uh, I know that Justin in Wyoming knows about this and it is sick, okay? I've got it in like, oh, eight or so colors. And um, obviously I like it in rainbow and brown trout patterns, but I also like it, you know, in perch and clown and shad and pink colors. Excuse me, it sounds like maybe one of my daughters is awake right now and I can't totally tell. Another bait that is a very similarly sized lure is the Lucky Craft Pointer 68. This is a suspending jerk bait, so it is going to dive a few feet. This is not floating, whereas, um, well, the HD Trout is a uh, more of a countdown style jerk bait, a little bit smaller in size than, say, the. Uh, the Lucky Craft 68. As you can see, the HD is, I think, just about two inches in size. So closer to like a 50 mil, but um, wicked, wicked bait, okay? I've also got it in a white color. Um, that is right up there, probably my go-to trout lure if I'm going to fish with lures. But we've talked about this before. The Yozuri Pins Minnow is another go-to for me. I've got it in a handful of colors. It is a floating style, I believe, as opposed to uh, a countdown or suspending style jerk bait. But absolutely love it and the flash that it produces it is a very narrow bait, um, has some great action on it. Another that I really do like quite a lot is the Rebel Countdown, or Trackdown it's called. I'm not going to say too much about it. Um, and then there are a few others. Rapala makes a few really good ones. Um... The Husky Jerk in their smaller couple sizes have a good rattle in them. And um, and then, of course, their Balsa. Um, I forget what these guys are called. You know, just the Ultralight Minnow or something of the sort. Okay? Another that is underrated and um, I throw sometimes, but more so when I'm fishing for panfish than trout is the Leland Lures Trout Magnet. I don't have my box of trout magnets here. They're out in the garage. Um, I use this for multi-species fishing of all kinds. This is a 164th ounce jig head, tiny hook, and a small split tail soft plastic worm. Yeah, Justin, I know you love the HD Trout. Being in Wyoming, I, I know that you've got easy access to it, and I'm not surprised that you're familiar with it. Yeah, the J-Spec is bigger. Um, I actually don't throw it, but um, yeah, I've heard really good things about it and uh, just haven't gotten around to really adding it to my arsenal and using it much. Again, I would throw like the Rapala Balsa, you know, ultralight minnow more frequently, but that's just me. I also occasionally would throw an ultralight 
uh, rattle trap or even a popper. One other that I didn't talk about yet, but um, have had a lot of success on and enjoy throwing is the Strike King Bitsy Minnow. Okay, little tiny guy. Again, tiny treble hooks. Um, I've had tremendous success on this with bluegill, crappie, and trout, and uh, and do recommend it as well. Uh, it's more of a traditional square bill crankbait, but a miniature size. So, I'm gonna wrap this bad boy up here in just a second. Okay, sounds good, man. Um, no diggity. Hit me up about those uh, lake trout lures tomorrow, and we'll we'll get to chatting about it. Appreciate you. Riley says, also, I'm going to Bass Pro tomorrow. Is there anything, like, special I should get to throw in for the giveaway? No, Riley, don't do that. Don't go buying stuff to put in the giveaway. Uh, but do hit me up about the giveaway. And I still hold... Um, on what I said about wanting to put in unopened new lures into the giveaway as opposed to stuff that is already opened. But let's talk more about that, okay? Last thing that I'll mention is the Ned Rig. I do throw the Ned Rig for trout a fair amount and, um, and do recommend it quite a lot. Um, uh, Here's one of my favorite setups. This right here is a standard Z-Man finesse shrooms jig head in their smaller 120th ounce size, not the brand new OG, um, whatever they call it, OG Ned head. Um, but 1 20th of an ounce is rather light. And this is the TRD Bugs. Absolutely love it. Uh, really good action, stands up straight. Uh, subtle action, but I like it a little bit better than I do the TRD Cross. That is just me. Both are awesome baits, but tiny little profile that in my opinion has a more realistic profile and a better action than say the the original finesse trd so yeah alan you should definitely check out the bitsy minnow from strike king they are like five bucks a bait but super cool you can find them at walmart uh you can find them at a lot of different places so justin says tyler i'm going to rewind to the beginning bro catch the whole stream Shoot me that text so I can have your number. Yes, man. I've got it saved in my... I've got your number saved in my phone. I will text you after I get off here in a few minutes. I need to pee, and I think my phone battery is probably running a little bit low. So tell me real quick. You guys have been in here for pretty much the entire hour that we've been streaming. How has the quality been tonight? I know that the camera quality, the picture quality has probably been better than normal because I'm using the standard camera on my phone um, and it's not on selfie mode so I'm I'm trying to look at you guys as much as possible but then I'm glancing over to my computer to read your comments which isn't ideal but I know that the video quality is probably better how has the audio been and how has the uh, the internet connection been compared to in the past tell me guys I'm gonna chug the rest of this beer and then dip out. Yeah, I know that, Justin. It was pretty bad uh, last week and has been in general. I occasionally will just rewatch to see that uh, and I know it's been subpar, so I apologize for that. I want you guys to be able to see things up close when I show you. You know, if I wanna show you a bait, I want it to be clear. I want you to be able to hear me and I don't want it cutting out and skipping and being trippy. So I appreciate you guys hanging out despite the low quality a lot of the time, but I do want to improve that for you guys uh, moving forward. So right on. 
Last few minutes, my connection stops for a few seconds. Sorry to hear that. All right, guys. Well, really, really appreciate you hanging out. Again, I'm going to chug the rest of this beer. Probably just put three ounces in my mouth at once. Oh, hope you guys have a great rest of your Saturday night and a great Sunday tomorrow. It is the first Sunday of the NFL season, week one. Again, my Broncos aren't playing until Monday night, uh, where they'll probably lose to the Titans, but it is a home game, and I'm going to be watching with family, celebrating uh, my sister-in-law's birthday. So, hope you all have a great rest of your weekend, and, uh, and I will see you very soon again. Cheers, guys.